Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at how you can set up OpenVPN on your Synology NAS to securely connect to your local network from wherever you are. Now, OpenVPN is fairly complicated for a lot of people. So we're gonna break this down step by step and try and explain everything throughout the entire process. But there's a few important notes you have to be aware of. The first is you have to be able to port forward. If you can't port forward, unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to use OpenVPN. The second is that the setup process is a little bit more complicated than something like Tailscale, which you can also run on your Synology NAS. Tailscale is a zero configuration VPN, but they basically manage the entire process for you. So really all you're doing on your NAS itself is opening up the package center, installing Tailscale, and then configuring that. And in a few steps, honestly, like three to five minutes, you can probably have Tailscale up and running and access your NAS. That's out of scope for this video. I do have an article on Tailscale, I'll leave in the description. And I also have instructions for everything in regards to OpenVPN, which we'll be doing today that I will leave in the description as well. So let's get into it so the very first thing that you have to do is open up the package center search for the vpn server application and then install it so while this is installing what i want to mention is we'll be configuring openvpn on your nas in this video but if you have a different device that is capable of running a vpn server you can do it there as well so for transparency purposes I did use OpenVPN on my NAS for about a year and it worked well, no problems. Right now, it runs on my firewall on PFSense and I use both WireGuard and OpenVPN on that server. So while I'm showing you this today, this is not currently what I'm using, but the point is there are multiple places where you can run a VPN server. It does not have to be on your NAS. So now that that's out of the way and the VPN server application is installed, the first thing you're gonna see here is the general settings and the privileges. We're gonna go through each of these. Now, general settings, just make sure, this should automatically set to uh, the LAN interface that you're currently using. I only have one uh, ethernet cable plugged into my NAS right now, but if you have multiple, any of them will be fine. The point is you wanna make sure that you're connecting to the correct network interface. The second thing we're gonna take a look at is this privileges tab. So by default, all of your users are going to have privilege, meaning that if they're capable of connecting to any of the VPN servers, they will have permission to do that. So what I like to do is actually uncheck all of this and apply it. So at this point, nobody has access to anything. And then what I do is I come in to the control panel, go to users and groups, and then I create a new user that will only be used for the VPN tunnel. So this user will not have permission to any shared folders. This user will not have permission to do anything other than connect to OpenVPN. You do not have to do it this way. If you have regular users on your NAS, you can just allow them to sign in. I like to manage it this way, mainly because then I'm connecting to the VPN with a different user than I will actually connect to my NAS with, but there's not a right or wrong answer. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna walk through this. And what you'll see is while they'll be added to the users, I'm gonna provide no access to all my shared folders. And then we're gonna keep walking through this. And then I'm gonna deny access to everything. And then we are gonna create this user. So now we have a new user account, which we'll use only to connect through OpenVPN. So if we close out of here, and we can close out of the package center, Let's refresh this and then you'll see this new user. So we're gonna uncheck this user from everything other than OpenVPN. And at this point, we will connect to the VPN using this VPN user account. And then from there, we will go through and connect to DSM and everything else using our regular DSM users. So one point I wanna you know, really highlight here is that if you have multiple people that are connecting to your NAS, this is probably not something you're gonna do. Uh, this is another layer of security technically that at least that's how i look at it but you don't have to do it this way if you have multiple users that will be connecting just set up their user accounts to have permission to open vpn and you'll be fine so moving on to open vpn here the first thing you're going to see is this open vpn server and we're going to enable it now this 10.8.0.1 that is the ip address of your open vpn server so every client that you have that's going to connect to this vpn server will actually be assigned a IP address. When they're assigned that IP address, they'll be connecting through the 10.8.0 subnet. 
So if you have multiple users, 10.8.0.2, 10.8.0.3, you get the point. Every user will connect using a different IP address on this 10.8.0 subnet. Now this maximum connection number, this is gonna really be based on how many users you're connecting. Most people, I'm assuming it's gonna be a small number, but you can modify this as well. And then max connections of an account, you can actually connect multiple times on an individual account, but you can modify this setting if you want. Now, port, this is important. By default, the OpenVPN port is UDP port 1194. I right now I'm gonna change this to 1195 only because I am using OpenVPN on PFSense right now. I have it running and it's using port 1194. So the point here is you can make this anything that you want. If you wanna just change it to get off of the default port, you can do that. If you wanna leave it at 1194, you can do that as well. I am only changing it because I don't want to disable everything that I have on OpenVPN currently. So I'm changing it to 1195, but you'll have to remember this for a little later. So take note of that and then let's move on. All of this other stuff can stay as default. This is really just the encryption. I would say that whatever Synology sets here, leave it as default. And this bottom section here is going to become pretty important. The first thing we're going to take a look at is this allow clients to access servers LAN. Now allow clients to access servers LAN. What that means is you're going to be connecting to a VPN tunnel, a secure VPN tunnel. When you connect to that tunnel, what it's going to allow you to do is access the services on your local network if you select this. So let's say you have a PC and you want to access it when you connect to your VPN you will have to have this setting enabled. If you don't have it enabled, you're not gonna be able to actually access it. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is this verify TLS auth key. I would keep this as enabled and then I would apply all of these settings, verify the server common name. Honestly, I've had problems with this in the past. I would probably not recommend that you turn that on. You can turn it on though. It's gonna try and validate a few additional parameters that we're not gonna go into. I did have problems with that. If you wanna try it out, you can. So believe it or not, but the VPN server is actually configured at this point, but we're not close to where we need to be. So the next step is going to be DDNS. Now, DDNS will ensure that you're connecting to your external IP address at all times. If your external IP address ever changes, it will automatically update that DDNS host name, and then you'll ensure that you're always connecting to it. A few notes that I wanna make. If you have a static external IP address, meaning that it never changes, you do not have to do this. Most home users do not have a static external IP address. So we're gonna go through the process of configuring DDNS now. But if you have a static external IP address, you can skip this step. So the easiest way, in my opinion, is to actually use Synology's uh, built-in DDNS service. So what you could do is open up the control panel, go to external access, and then go to DDNS. From there, you are going to select Synology, then you're going to select a host name. Now this is the host name that will update if your external IP address ever changes. You'll then see that auto is selected for both IPv4 and IPv6. This should be fine. If you don't have an IPv6 address, you can disable this if you want, but either way, leaving this as auto should be fine. Now, what we're gonna do is test the connection, and then as soon as that reports back as normal, you should be good. The other thing that I wanna point out here is get a certificate from Let's Encrypt and set it as default. I like to select this, and the reason I like to select this is because when you get a certificate from Let's Encrypt this way, it actually gets it through DNS. I don't wanna to get too complicated here, but when you get a certificate from Let's Encrypt, normally you have to open a port, so 80 or 443 on your router, and at that point, it goes through and validates the certificate, and that's how you would manage it moving forward. When you get a certificate using this method right here, this DDNS method on your NAS, what it's actually doing is it's obtaining it through DNS. So what that means is you don't have to open ports 80 or 443, and moving forward, all of the renewals will actually be done through DNS as well. So you'll never have to have a port open, and you will have a DDNS host name with a valid SSL certificate from Let's Encrypt that is renewed through DNS. I just said a lot, it'll make a little bit more sense in a second here, but when you select okay here, what you'll see is that this certificate will be set as the default certificate. So we're gonna click okay here, and then it's gonna take a few minutes, but you will get a certificate, and then what is gonna happen is the web server is actually gonna restart, and once it restarts, we'll get back to this. Okay, so after the 
DNS is done configuring, the web server will actually restart and you can continue to it. And what you'll see is if you open up the control panel, go to security and then select certificate, what you'll see is we have our DDNS certificate. So it's a wildcard certificate and it's actually renewed through DNS. Now in the settings here, you'll see that everything was changed to this. The reason it's important to do it in this order is because when we export our VPN configuration file, what we're actually doing is exporting a certificate that's part of the uh, VPN configuration file. So you have to do it in this order. But the point is we're using this certificate and now we can move on to finishing the creation of OpenVPN. So we're gonna open up the VPN server, we're gonna go back to OpenVPN, and then we are going to export this configuration file. The only other thing I wanna point out is all of these settings, when you actually change them, what you're really doing is modifying the configuration file. So if you hover over any of these, what you'll actually see is that they go through and they say you have to re-export the configuration file. The reason you have to re-export the configuration file is because it's adding parameters to that VPN configuration file. So whenever you make a change, the easiest thing you can do is export the configuration file and start to use that. But I do want to point out that if you open the VPN configuration file and you manually make changes to it, that works as well. So let's export it and then this will make a little bit more sense. So I'm gonna open up this VPN configuration file with this text edit program and then you will see that this is our VPN configuration file. So a few things that we have to change right off the bat. So our DDNS host name has to, be, has to go here. So mine was ddnswondertech.synology.me. If you aren't sure what it is, you can go back into external access DDNS, and then you'll see your DDNS host name here. As long as it says normal, you're good. So we're gonna minimize this again. And then what you're gonna see is 1195. This is the port that we're using for OpenVPN. If, you're, if you didn't change this port, it will still be 1194, or if you changed it to something entirely different, it will reflect that here. Two things I wanna talk through. The first thing we're gonna do is add a parameter. Client cert not required. If we, add the, if we don't add this, you're just gonna get a certificate error that you have to click through every time you try and connect to the VPN server. Not a major problem, but I like to add this. The other thing we're gonna talk about is this redirect gateway. So by default, OpenVPN is configured as a split tunnel VPN. What that means is that you will only route traffic for your local network through this VPN tunnel. So when you're connecting to it, all of your traffic will still go out through whatever network you're currently on. But if you try to connect to your NAS, for example, it will route that traffic through the VPN tunnel. If you uncomment this, what these hashtags slash pound signs are for is their, their comments. So when it's written this way, it's commented out, so nothing will actually run. And when you remove it, you're uncommenting it. When you remove that, what it's actually gonna do is it's gonna route all of your traffic through the VPN tunnel. So what I personally like to do is I like to create two VPN uh, configuration files, one for full tunnel, one for split tunnel. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna save this and then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna just rename this to VPN full tunnel. And then I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it. I'm gonna rename this to VPN split tunnel. And then we're gonna go through and we're gonna open this again with our text editor. And then we are going to comment this out again. And now we have two configuration files. Now, this is the configuration file. So anything you change here in one way or another will alter this VPN tunnel. So the reason why VPNs are secure and the reason why people suggest them is because whether you realize it or not, you actually have multiple forms of authentication with this VPN tunnel. So not only do you need the username and the password that we configured earlier, you actually need the certificate file slash configuration file as well. If you have one and not the other, there's nothing that you're gonna be able to do. So you actually have multiple forms of authentication built in. The other thing is that you're only opening one port. In this case, I'll be opening UDP port 1195, but you only have one port that you're actually utilizing and you're able to access all of your services on your local network. So now that we have our VPN configuration files uh, set up, what we have to do is move on to the actual port forwarding section. Now port forwarding is 
going to be the most frustrating part of this for most people because I can't really show it to you. What I will do is show you how to port forward on PFSense, but port forwarding on PFSense is drastically more complicated than probably any other device that you're going to be using. So this section is going to look very confusing. I promise you it's probably not going to be this confusing on your setup, but regardless, we will walk through it. So before we get to that point, you have to make sure the IP address on your Synology NAS is static. So that's this is the local IP address. In this network section, I have a Synology NAS setup, you know, full length movie that I released last week that goes into this. Uh, but if, if you edit this, what you'll see is I have uh, the static IP address 10.2.0.59 set. You can do this on your router. If you want to set a DHCP reservation, it's better to do it there. Or you can come in here and you can use manual configuration and then the NAS will attempt to use this IP address at all times. This is very important because you're going to be port forwarding. So this is in PFSense, my port forwarding rule. So way more complicated than yours is going to look, but we will quickly talk through this. So what we're doing is we are port forwarding UDP port 1195 to our Synology NAS. So what we're basically doing is we're saying that on UDP port 1195, we're gonna open that up for this device and this device only. So that's why this IP address is here. Redirect target port is the same, they just match. You don't have to worry about this. Once again, this is just PFSense being PFSense. And then you can save this. I have an old screenshot from, I think it's a Netgear router that I will leave in the written instructions that you'll see as well. This step is gonna be different for everybody. Just Google whatever router you have and port forwarding and you should find steps on how to port forward. You just have to make sure that you port forward UDP port, whatever you selected to your Synology NAS. So at this point, we port forwarded, we configured the VPN server, we have our DDNS hostname set up, everything is ready to go. The next step is going to be actually connecting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to import these. So you'll see here, this is my PFSense VPNs that I have set up already. Okay, so what I did is I just copied them to the desktop to make it a little easier. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag and drop them in. So what you'll see is that we have our profile name here. I'm just gonna change this. And now what we have to do is connect with the VPN user that we configured earlier. Now everything else should be good. So you can click connect here. It's not actually, it's gonna attempt to connect, but we're on the same network. We'll get to that in a second. And then we're just gonna drag in the second file here. All right, so we have both of our VPN configuration files in. I'll talk through the differences in a second, but what you have to do is you have to ensure that you're on an external network. So what I'm quickly gonna do is open up a hotspot on my phone, connect to it, and then we'll, regroup back in a second. So I have my hotspot that I just connected to. If you attempt to connect on your local network, it's not gonna work. So connect this to the hotspot. This is the first time I'm running it. We are going to come in here, attempt to connect, and assuming that it works, it's gonna take a second here because it's a hotspot. Okay, so technical difficulties because I have WireGuard set to automatically connect. So that was causing some problems, but now we're back. Uh, and we're gonna try, we're connected to our hotspot. What we're gonna do is try and connect to the VPN tunnel and you will see that we are good. So really quickly, I will dis disconnect from the VPN tunnel, go back to DSM, try and connect to it and you will see that I am not able to connect. If we wait long enough, it's actually gonna be an error page. All right, while we're waiting for that to error out, I'm actually gonna show you that what you can see is we're connected to the split tunnel VPN right now and our public IP address is the IP address of my hotspot. So we are not able to connect to Synology DSM. What we're gonna do is we are gonna come back here, connect to the VPN split tunnel, and then we're gonna refresh DSM, and you're gonna see that DSM is gonna to start to load. It's slow because my hotspot is very slow, but you get the point. So once again, our IP address, external IP address, it's still gonna be our hotspot. While we're connected to the VPN, we're only connected to the VPN for traffic that is destined for the VPN server, meaning your local IP addresses on your local network. What we're gonna quickly do, minimize this, 
and we are going to connect to the full tunnel VPN. When we connect to the full tunnel VPN, what you'll see is we can still connect to DSM, albeit very slowly. All right, that took forever, but the point remains, we can still connect to DSM. But what I really wanted to show you is that we are now connected to my home network meaning all of our traffic is going through our home network. So when would you use a split tunnel VPN and when would you use a full tunnel VPN? This is the way that I do it. If you wanna route all of your traffic through your home at all times, obviously you'll use a full tunnel VPN. But when I'm on a public Wi-Fi, I will always use a full tunnel VPN. In basically all other scenarios, I use a split tunnel VPN. So I will, if I'm connected to a family member's house, their Wi-Fi, I'll you know, route out all my regular traffic through their Wi-Fi. Then I'll route only the traffic destined for the VPN server through that VPN tunnel. It just allows me to browse the internet faster. However, if you want privacy, meaning if you want everything to route through your, um, through your home network, you would then use the full tunnel VPN. So the reason I like to create both of these is really just for that reason. It ensures that if I want to route all of my traffic through the VPN tunnel, I can. And if I don't want to, I don't have to. So that is basically the entire tutorial. Like I said, I have written instructions that will walk through the entire process. I will leave a link in the description for that. But that really will just break down each individual step and walk you through the entire process of creating the configuration file, et cetera. So to recap, the majority of people recommend a VPN tunnel mainly because you're able to access your entire home network if you really want to. This is not something that you have to do. You can use Quick Connect or you can use port forwarding, though I do not recommend it, or you can use reverse proxy. You get the point. A VPN tunnel is a secure way of accessing your home network, and it not only allows you to access your Synology NAS, but it allows you to access all of the other devices on your personal network. So I'm hopeful that this video helped you out. If it did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel if you like this type of content. And if not, I will see you next time.